Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Heroes Crossing, and it's made by One Method Monkey. In the game Heroes Crossing, you'll be playing with two to four players with a single pair variant, and it takes about an hour to about an hour and a half. It's made by Brian Sowers, and the game is where you are going to take part in the hero's journey. You are not going to be a hero, however, and instead you're going to be the shopkeepers and innkeepers, the people behind the scenes that help the heroes get decked out with amazing gear, to which then they can go ahead and fight a dragon. It'll be on you to whether or not they're going to have a stick and maybe a broom to fight a monster, or whether it be they have the most powerful sword and shield, and that is what will take it to defeat the dragon and thus save the world. So you kind of put all that together to make it happen. And it's cool because you're making your own town and you're getting these heroes geared and outfitted, and that's the basic idea of the game. Now you gotta do this the best, and the best person for the job is obviously the shopkeepers and whatnot, and if you can maintain your village and help produce the uh, heroes to make them stronger and healthier to fight the bad guys you will win the game overall all right so let's go ahead and take a look at the game and all the different components in it and what you'll need in order to succeed in heroes crossing so here we have the game Heroes Crossing and everything that's included, as well as it's a kind of set up for the first start of the game. You're also going to get a rule book, a solo player rules variant, and of course the box here. Uh, this is for a four player game setup, which is everybody's going to start with four tiles from the level one deck. You're going to give every single player that's playing the game four of the die, one of each color, as well as their character meeples, which will be used as spies and as a placement for their die to represent their, their player. Uh, you're going to get two of these modifiers here and then you're going to have a bunch of stuff so let's go over it all these are basic land tiles all of them are the same but they have different uh, looks to all of them which is nice this here is going to be the rounds uh, bidding orders in which you're gonna have four different things you can bid on and what you're gonna gain and there's gonna be two different actions on each of the different bidding platforms and of course different cards for each of the rounds which is nice and when they get uh, done up you shuffle them up again these are all the resources you're going to be gathering and uh, whether it be building for the weapon smithy or whether it be building for the the apothecary there's all the different colors that represent those from these tiles here the dice graveyard is where you put your die when you're done with them and after all of these go that's when the round is going to end these are additional modifiers of your dice level one two and three tile pieces you're going to start by uh, shuffling these this deck obviously and putting out five of them from the level one deck as well as setting up this hero deck here there's a bunch of extra hero cards in here level three level two and level one you will simply choose uh, shuffling randomly and dealing out four for each of them and then putting them in a stack four ones four twos and four threes and placing them down here and the four ones will start every player that's playing the game is also going to go on this point track here and you're going to start at zero now to begin the game it's pretty simple you're going to get all your stuff here and uh, you're also going to get your tiles and then you're going to start by drafting you're going to look at the cards in your hand and determine what you want to keep and what you want to pass for instance this one here is an armor shop and it tells you the level and it tells you uh, what it creates and the color uh, and then of course you have tiles like these which are wild ones that help in certain ways that are based on building the terrain uh, so you'll pick one and you'll pass so let's just go ahead and say that they all went ahead and drafted already since I'm pretty sure most of you know what a draft is after the draft is done you're simply going to build your town area and building your town area has a couple of rules the first rule is everybody gets two of these to start the game off with these are basically your basic tiles and you can go ahead and build it how you want. So let's go ahead and start off. The only rule is you can't build connecting structures. So you couldn't do that per se, because there's two armor shops attached to each other, but you could make it something like this if you wanted. Now this is a special one, so it doesn't count as a shop, so you can place it there if you wanted to, but let's just go ahead and not do that. Let's go ahead and build it like this instead. Everybody else would do the same thing as well. Let's go ahead and take these aside because we're not gonna need them. I'm just gonna give you a basic understanding walkthrough of the game. Uh, so let's put these guys over here. Okay, so now everybody else has done this exact same thing here. And uh, then uh, we're gonna go ahead and draw an action card. So we flipped over the top action card here, which is this one here. And you're gonna see the four different pools of actions you can take, whether it's bid and produce, attract and expel, move and get land, modifiers and spy. Uh, you're then going to go ahead and roll your uh, die here, which are these things here. Uh, and you're going to get different numbers and stuff. So let's go say everybody went ahead and rolled already. And you're also going to take this and roll. This is the zoning die. This is east. There's also north. There is west, south. And then there's these two. This one is a user's choice. And this is no zoning uh, restrictions. So we'll just go ahead and say uh, this is a user's choice. So we'll say north here, okay? 
Everybody's also rolled their die. All right, so then we're going to go ahead and talk about all the different actions before we begin the first player's turn. Uh, first of all, there's bid and produce. Bidding is where you can bid on these different land pieces here, and you have to bid based on the color. So a green die will go here, a blue one, and a red one would go here. The highest die number is going to win, uh, and provided it gets to your next turn, if you're the only die there or the highest die, you're going to take this piece and you'll get it and put your die in the die graveyard. Uh, producing is going to allow you to produce resources based on the die you chose. So for instance, this player here, he's got a magic shop and an armor shop. Uh, let's see if there's a, oh, and this is, like, this is like a weapon smithy, right? It has a little hammer here. If he had this on his board uh, right here, he and he chose a red space, so let's say he chose to get this weapon shop, he would place a red die there and no one else took it, he would get this, and he would also produce a red on the red spaces on his board. So that's how uh, producing works. And you're gonna wanna produce in order to gain these guys here. Um, this is attract and expel. Attract is going to allow you to attract one of these guys here. If you place a red die in here, for instance, um, and you're also going to go ahead and take one of these guys and represent your bid so people know which color bid which uh, die. Um, then at the end of the round, after everybody has played their die, you can go ahead and place these pieces if you have uh, gained them into your shops, and you can try and attract fighters, which are, are going to give you points throughout the game. It's going to be based on the shop value. So if it's a level one shop that's giving him a weapon, it's going to give him one point. If it's level two, it'll give you two points, and you'll move yourself down the track here. And so, and also these guys, if you gather both of them, you're going to get their special ability, which you can use once per round. Expelling will remove spies from the game. Spies are things that players are going to take these meeples and place them on your locations. And basically what happens is you're not able to move resources across your board when a spy is there. So expelling them is going to make you move them off the board and give them back to their, uh, their person who owns it. Moving is where simply if, let's say, I went ahead and made that red uh, space, and I got that red space, and I got a red cube on there, I would then go ahead and move based on the die, and I'm trying to move it to a location that has... Uh, a shop. So for instance, this one would be a good one if I could have placed it, but I'm, right now I'm in trouble. I can't place it. I guess you have to be able to place um, uh, not adjacent, so there had to be something like this. But then I can go ahead and move this across, and I can get it to try and, try and get it to here. So that's how moving works in the game. Um, I'm going to just fill these up for, for the heck of it. Now, modifiers. So these are these things here. Modifiers will either increase your die roll to plus one, so a five could be a six, or you could use this, give it to another player, and swap the dice uh, that you have. So for instance, maybe you want a four as opposed to a three, you could simply swap these by giving him a modifier. And then spy will also allow you to place one of your spies on an opponent's location. So that can, that can, that can help by making them eh, mess up. Everybody can place one spy on, on anywhere they want, but they can only have one spy in the game. And that's the basic idea. So after you choose one of these four different uh, full actions, they come or locate, you know, different areas that have two actions on them, then you're going to pass and everybody else will do the same bidding on the locations. When it comes to your turn, if you have one of these spaces from the, la the previous turn and, you and you're the only person to bid on it and you're the highest, you would gain that location and you would put your die in the die graveyard like I explained previously. Um, and otherwise, it's basically you're just doing whatever it says on here. Now, at the end of the round, which is when all the die have entered the die graveyard, that is when you're going to actually attract your uh, customers. That's the most important thing in the game is attracting these guys here. It's going to be based on your roles. And it's actually interesting how it's going to work. So I'll go ahead and show you really quickly how it works. Let's say that there was three on this thing here. So a six, a three, and a one. The orange player was the first person to bid. Then it was the purple. And then it was the black player. These are the people who bid, and this is the order. The end of the round, the person who has six is able to put down resources first. Let's say he didn't have anything. Well, that wastes his, his, his opportunity. So the next player would be purple. Let's say purple had a red. So purple would go ahead and put this red down. He would gain a point for having a shop be a level one shop. Um, so purple is going to move up one space on the track. However, he didn't also have enough to fill all of the requirements. So the black player, let's say that he had a white one available, which is, is a wild space. He could place that there. He would also go ahead and gain a point and he would gain this character. And this character would go to that specific player, whoever was uh, the one who acquired it. And, uh, then a, 
one of these guys is going to drop. When one of these guys drops, if it's a level two, it'll open up the level two aspect of the game, which will increase the amount of different objects in the game, which are the different tile sets. And then, of course, when the number three shows up, the threes are going to pop up as well, and you'll be able to bid on any of these things for your bid action. And that's kind of how that works. They'll give you more points throughout the game. Some of the tiles also give you uh, bonus points, like this one says you can have three points, or there'll be wild tiles that are not buildings. So it's a whole bunch of different things. And they also tell you the different levels. This is a level three, not because it has level three, it has three different uh, lights there, and this is the level one. So you're going to be building your tableau throughout the game. You'll use these guys, and every round you can simply tap this and utilize this as add or subtract one to any unused weapon die, which is basically a modifier for free, which is pretty sweet if you ask me. And of course, utilizing these to create your areas, because you're going to need to have to follow the rules for building and whatnot. You're also going to go ahead and get all your die back from the graveyard at the beginning of the next round, and take away this one here, put it on the bottom, and flip over a new one. And as you can see, now it's different. It's bid and get land, attract and modifiers, move and spy, produce and expel. And that is how the game works. Eventually, after all of these guys get given out to different players, uh, of course, the threes pop out. When the uh, when these guys pop out, if they have all been bought, or uh, when the last one has been dropped, there's going to be two turns. And then after that, the game will end. And it's going to be based on the number of victory points players are going to achieve. And also, don't forget, at the end of the game, you're going to get bonus points for each of the locations on your map that have points. So, for instance, that would give you a bonus three points. And not only that, but there are characters in here. Let's see if I can go ahead and find one really quick. Like, uh, there's the king, wherever he is. Uh, which will allow you to gain three points. So these guys will tell you uh, at the end of the game. So it says plus three victory points at the end of the game. So that can give you points as well, which might nudge you up just enough, one, two, three, and then one, two, and three for your space to win the game Heroes Crossing. That's the basic idea in a nutshell. Of course, it comes with a bunch of extra stuff here. It comes with a bunch of different locations that do a bunch of different things, but I think you get a good idea of it. So let's come up and talk about it as well as any caveats. So let's talk about Heroes Crossing. The first thing is obviously caveats. Uh, at the beginning of the game, if you happen to get two of the same tile, you can go ahead and replace one with one randomly uh, because you're probably not going to want to have two of the same tile. Also, when you place buildings, you can place them all on an empty space provided you respect the zoning rules. Uh, or you can go ahead and place a two on a one or a level three on a level two. So you can go ahead and actually, this is a level one mage council, I can go ahead and place a level two armor shop on top of that, which will then allow you to get better stuff. And the last thing, which I didn't do throughout the explanation because uh, it would just have been tedious, but respect the die placement rules. When you roll this die at the beginning of every single round, it'll tell you where you can place certain things, like you can only place east, south, north, or west, as well as the choice or the no zoning requirements. Do make sure you respect that. But for the sake of quickness and clarity, I just went ahead and did not do that. So now you know. An additional thing too is that there are levels one, twos, and threes for bad guys, or not bad guys, for the heroes that you're gonna be equipping. And uh, they all uh, have different things going on with them. The, for instance, you may use armor, the armor dies that were a color die. You can add a subtract and uh, use magic die, plus two movements whenever you use a move action. When gaining the gambler, you may roll a die, and on a one to four, gain three victory points, or on a five or a six, you lose one. So they all have all these different things that can affect them. You're going to gain these guys and put them in your tableau, and you can utilize their abilities once per round. They can be pretty good, and there's a ton of them because you're only going to need actually four, eight, and 12 total for every single game that you play. And do remember that you're going to get all your dice back at the, end, at the end of every round. Okay, so that is the basics idea for the game. It's pretty simple, right? But there's a lot that goes on with it, specifically because of these action cards here that change the way your actions function every single game uh, and every single round as well, which is really cool. I really like this aspect of the game. It's also a nice tile placement game as far as that goes because it's all about controlling your own area, messing with your opponents, and also securing bids. So it's got worker placement, it's got area control, and it's got bidding all in one game, and it all works pretty smoothly. It might be a little too, some people might say it's a little too finicky as for like what it's trying to go for, I suppose, as for like, it's a bidding game. Yeah, but it's also area control because you need to control the area and you need to move your, your pieces to gather the resources, and it's also about getting the right guys and attracting them, so there's, there's just a lot going on. But it's simple, which makes it nice. The artwork on all the cards is great. I like the specific type of, uh, 16-bit 
Uh, actually, what's interesting is they all have different bits on them. There's 8 and 12 and 16 based on the level of the characters, so it changes throughout the game. So it feels like one of those older Nintendo games, which is solid. I, I like Mega Man. I've got a lot of Mega Man stuff going on here. So as you can see, I'm a big fan of that style artwork. But on the box itself, the artwork is completely different and even maybe, I guess, a little confusing. I'm not a fan of this style artwork because it doesn't fit the theme of the game as far as what the game's artwork looks like. Uh, but on the box back, it does show exactly the artwork of the game. I just don't want it to be confusing for people thinking that this is going to be the artwork for the game. Inside it, it's not. It's going to actually be quite literally as though you're playing games like Zelda and whatnot uh, as for how it's going to look and the characters you're going to be getting. But the artwork of the box is great. The artwork on the box, I didn't like as much. Uh, I had a friend when we were playing this a while ago, uh, we had uh, from Show Me How to Win, she, uh, sh uh, she was playing it and she said that it was uh, too simple. And then another one of my friends said it was just right. And I, I'm probably on in the camp of it's 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 right between com simple and like medium. It's right in the middle there because it has a lot of options and choice that you can make in the game, but it's also not to the point where you don't know what you're going to be making. There's certain options that are most likely the best for you. And then of course you have that take that aspect of bidding where you can say, oh, I'm not going to allow you to get this guy now because I'm going to bid higher than you, which is going to net me the ability to score. Speaking of which, the higher die is always the one that has priority when attracting these different guys here. It's not the first time, it's not the first person who places. However, if it is a tie on there, the first person who places is going to win, which is a nice aspect as well. You can't take it away from me unless you have a higher route roll, and you do know what people roll, so it's just whether or not they're going to do that specific action as to whether or not they're going to steal from you. The modifiers are cool, and the fact that you can swap dice is interesting as well, because it go, you go, oh, okay, now I know he wants that red one, but I also want that red one. I can swap with him, but it's going to make it worse for me later in the game, because he's going to have an extra modifier, which could either take from me or some other player, as well as increasing his own die roll. Uh, the different tiles is a nice touch as well. It provides a little breath of fresh air in the game every time you sing, every single time you try and play and it also adds a different special unique tile locations which are better than the basic ones basic ones are pretty easy to get and free for that matter uh, these ones have those in there but they also have some wild tiles as well as of course just the different armor shops and the armor smiths uh, which you're going to be using to sell heroes. The theme of the game comes in very, very well. You do feel like you're outfitting heroes to go out into battle. You don't see them battle, though, because you are a shopkeeper. So just understand that this game is more about marketing as well as moving around rather than actually fighting, and, and even the take that is very small in this game. Overall, I really enjoyed this game. I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, it just feels like it's... It, doesn't, didn't know what it was doing fully with the box art and the game itself. I think that was the one thing that was going to probably throw people off. But once you pull the game out, if it's the type of thing that you like, and the, the type of artwork you enjoy, and you like these type of mechanics, this game's going to be fun for you, and I definitely suggest checking this one out. Overall, fun game, Heroes Crossing. Do check it out in the description below if this game sounds like it'd be something fun for you.